Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, please bless all the children who have joined us this week. Amen. Hello, boys and girls. Okay, so today the story will be taken from 2 Kings chapter 5, verses 1 to 27. And it goes, Now Naaman, commander of the army, and the king of Syria was a great honorable man in the eyes of his master, because by him the Lord had given victory to Syria. He was also a mighty man of valor, but a leper. And the Syrians had gone out on raids and had brought back captives a young girl from the land of Israel. She waited on Naaman's wife. Then she said to her mistress, If only my master were with the prophet who is in Samaria, for he would heal him of his leprosy. And Naaman went in and told his master, saying, Thus and thus says the girl who is from the land of Israel. Then the king of Syria said, Go now, and I will send a letter to the king of Israel. So he departed and took with him ten talents of silver, six thousand shekels of gold, and ten changes of clothes. Then he brought the letter to the king of Israel, which said, Now be advised when the letter comes to you, that I have sent Naaman my servant to you, that you may heal him of his leprosy. And it happened when the king of Israel read the letter, that he tore his clothes and said, Am I God to kill and make alive, that this man sends a man to me to heal him of his leprosy? Therefore, please consider and see how he seeks a quarrel with me. So it was when Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his clothes, that he sent to the king, saying, Why have you torn your clothes? Please let him come to me and he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. Then Naaman went with his horses and chariots, and he stood at the door of Elijah's house. And Elijah sent a messenger to him, saying, Go and wash in the Jordan seven times, and your flesh shall be restored to you, and you shall be clean. But Naaman became furious and went away and said, Indeed, I said to myself, if he will surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord, his God, and wave his hands over this place and heal the leprosy. Are not the Abana and the Parpar, the rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel? Could I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned and went away in a rage. Then his servants came near and spoke to him and said, my father, if the prophet had told you to do something great, would you not have done it? How much more then, when he says to you, wash and be clean? So he went down and dipped seven times in the Jordan, according to the sayings of the man of God, and his flesh was restored, like the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. And he returned to the man of God, he and all his aides, and he came and stood before him, and he said, Indeed, now I know that there is no God in all the earth except in Israel. Now, therefore, please take a gift for your servant. But he said, As the Lord lives before whom I stand, I will receive nothing. And he urged him to take it, but he refused. So Naaman said, then if not, please let your servant be given two mule loads of earth, for your servant will no longer offer either burnt offerings or sacrifices to other gods, but to the Lord. Yet in this thing, may the Lord pardon your servant when my master goes into the temple of Rimon to worship there, and he leans on my hand, and I bow down in the temple of Rimon, where I bow down in the temple of Rimon, May the Lord please pardon your servant in this thing. Then he said to him, Go in peace. So he departed from him a short distance. But Gehazi, the servant of Elijah, the man of God, said, Look, my master has spared Naaman, Syrian, while not receiving from his hands 
what he bought, but as the Lord lives, I will return after him and take something from him. So Gehazi pursued Naaman. When Naaman saw him running after him, he got down from the chariot to meet him and said, Is all well? And he said, All is well. My master has sent me, saying, Indeed, just now two young men of the sons of the prophets have come to me from the mountains of Ephraim. Please give them a talent of silver and two changes of garment. So Naaman said, Please take two talents. And he urged him and bound two talents of silver to two bags with two changes of garments and handed them to two of his servants and they carried them on ahead of him. When he came to the citadel, he took them from their hands and stored them away in the house. Then he let them go, and they departed. Now he went in and stood before his master. Elisha said to him, Where did you go, Gehazi? And he said, Your servant did not go anywhere. Then he said to him, Did not my heart go with you when the man turned back from his chariot to meet with you? Is it time to receive money and to receive clothing? olive groves and vineyards, sheep and oxen, male and female servants. Therefore, the leprosy of Naaman shall cling to you and your descendants forever. And he went out from his presence leprous, as white as snow. You see, boys and girls, Naaman did exactly what Elijah said to do. And Elijah knew not to take any gifts from Naaman, because it wasn't Elijah who cured Naaman, it was God. All Naaman had to do was listen to what God had instructed Elijah to tell Naaman to do. So that is the reason why Elijah did not take the gifts from Naaman. And likewise, when we do something, let's give God all the praise. Let's not take praise for ourselves. To God be the glory, great things he has done in your life and in mine. The very fact that we're alive and we're breathing is a moment that we can say, thank you, Jesus, for taking care of us all of our days. And just like the rain, the rain comes, the hail came. But now as I'm looking at it, the sun is coming back out. Amen. Trust God with all your heart. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. Hello boys and girls, I'm so thankful that you came to do this art with me. Probably somewhere around your home you have an old picture frame that you're thinking about throwing away and you're wondering what you can do with it. Well, I'm about to give you a few ideas. Here I am drawing some lines on the paper so that I can make a calendar. Uh, just try to evenly space them out. Make sure you get, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven going across. And you're going to need five going up and down. So try to make sure that they're evenly spaced. A ruler would be good. 
a much longer ruler <laughs> would be even better, but I don't have one at the moment, so I had to use one of my children's rulers. And so at the top now, you're going to leave space to write the date, such as Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Sabbath, or Saturday. And then I'm going to be going over it. You can choose any color marker or pen, whatever makes you happy. I went over mine in blue and drew a little heart. So what you're going to do here is turn it over and put the paper in and then close it back up. So here I am writing the days or numbers uh, so you know what you have to do for the week or the month. Here's a list you can write down. I have to do this on Sunday. I have to do that on Monday. I have to do that on Tuesday. So it could be a weekly calendar. And now I'm going to be taking it off, taking out the glass, and we're going to do some painting. Who loves painting? I do. So, we're just going to add some blues. Again, you can add any color that makes you happy. I just, I love these colors. I think that they're so beautiful. And you're just going to dab it. Use the brush and just dab it on. And just, you can even add more colors as you go on and you see the beautiful pattern that you've made. I enjoy the colors. I should have added some more dark blue, but I guess I can make another one another time. And yeah, you can just do whatever you want. Just dab it on, let it dry, layer it if you'd like. And with mine, I added some sparkles just because it makes it look a little more prettier. I will be using mine as a decorative piece on one of my tables. You can choose to leave it white the paper inside. I chose to make mine black and I'm just gonna paint this paper. I'm trying so hard not to paint the blue paper underneath. <laughs> it's very difficult. It's black so it's gonna catch on everything. So I just had to add. If you have like a colored paper that you like at home, instead of painting I didn't have any black paper. So that's the reason why I had to paint mine. But if you have a special color that you like, you can just put it in the picture frame. Just make sure that before you put it in the picture frame, you've checked the size and you cut the paper accordingly. And then you can add it after it's dried. So now the picture frame is dry the paper is dry and now I'm going to add the back make sure I pin those in really nicely and they're there just wipe it off and clean it and look at how pretty that looks just very beautiful so you can use it as a tray you can also use it as a calendar or you can just use it as a dry eraser board. Mine was used as a decorative piece.
1 Corinthians 13, verse 4 to 8. Love. The Bible says, Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. Is not puffed up. Does not behave rudely. Does not seek its own. Is not provoked. Thinks no evil. Does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Bears all things. Believes all things hopes all things, enjoys all things. Love never fails. Amen. You are my strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that I seek. You are my all in all. Seeking you as a precious jewel, Lord, to give up, I'd be a fool. You are my all in all. Taking my sin, my cross, my shame. Rising again, I bless your name. You are my all in all. When I fall down, you pick me up. When I am dry, you fill my cup. You are my all in all. The scripture verse is 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4 to 8. It's the chapter about love. And it says, Love suffers long. Love does not envy or boast. Love does not behave rudely. Love does not seek its own way. Love is not easily provoked. Love thinks no evil. Love does not rejoice in iniquity. Love rejoices in the truth. Love bears all things. Love believes all things. Love never fails. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, are the greatest examples of love. Now, we know the story of the cross where Jesus laid down his life to save us, you and I. The Bible says in John 15 verse 3, greater love has no one than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends while well, Jesus did the ultimate gift for us, the ultimate sacrifice. Before we were born, he loved us and he laid down his life for us and calls us friends and brothers and sisters. All right, let's repeat. Love suffers long. It does not envy or boast. It does not behave rudely. It does not seek its own way. It is not easily provoked. 
It thinks no evil. It does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verses 4 to 8. I want to say um, happy Father's Day to all the fathers who have joined us this week. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, 